We're wanting to make you all the next American CEOs. So it leads into what we're going to be doing today is what we've been doing is our certification. So today's mission is, is we're going to go over and use the Klimco donated sandblasting booth so that we can media blast all that slag off of your weld plates. And then I'm going to sit at booth number one on a stool and y'all are going to pass through booth number one to be able for me to give you help. Generally every morning when I pull up, I've already got kids waiting at the door to get to work. Doesn't matter if you're going to go into accounting to be a banker or a lawyer, it shows that you dedicated yourself to do something and you reached that goal and it'll stay with you forever. All right, let's get moving then. And then come in here and do a 45 here. 16 years ago, when they hired Dorman Vic to be the welding instructor here at Sam Champion High School in Bernie, no one had any idea what sweat, sparks, and stubborn determination could achieve. It's taken us 16 years uh, since the conception of the, pro of the program to build what we have today. They call him Vic. And after just one look around the shop, it's easy to understand the meteoric rise of one of the most prestigious welding programs in America. We've been blessed to win all the Ag Mechanics shows multiple times, hundreds of scholarships for kids. But there again, these banners on the wall are nothing more than dust collectors. It was the journey that the kids took to get there. We literally started with like one MIG welder and I guess you could say Barney Rebel tools. But the vision of that group of kids came in and embraced my vision. All day long, big students, from freshmen to seniors, push the boundaries of design and fabrication. Their efforts even attracted the attention of the United States Department of Agriculture. We ended up building a mobile deer capture trailer, and it was used in the eradication of the fever tick program. And then it turned around in 2010, we did a mobile dipping vat. And then the following year, we built a mobile scratch and spray box unit. You're telling me the U.S. government contracts with some high school kids to build? Isn't it cool? So when they come in here, the first thing that they build, is it like a smoker or something? The first, best way I can answer that is the first thing that I build is the person. The yes sir, the no sir, the yes ma'am, and the no ma'am. That's the most important thing. Why is that so important to you? Because I feel that that takes, they're already one percenters. Only one percent can take a concept and make it become reality. And if they have, can do it being with manners, now they're in the point zero one percent to make them employable. But one of the first projects that they build is, is a metal rose. Oh, wow. So they've gone to the point of looking at a rose from its bud, very, very early stages all the way to a finished rose. Look and at that. Why, why do you do this? To help shape and mold them into the, to better people where they, maybe they're having a bad day and they get to heat and beat and take their frustrations out. This so is not what I expect a welder to be concentrating on. Right, it's, I, I like to say that um, even the strongest personalities that come in here get broke down and rebuilt back up. Making long stem roses from steel. It's a process that can lead to, well, just about anything. We had a two ton smoker that we designed and built. Three students, they received $10,000 in scholarships, thousands of dollars in tools, and I allowed one of the students to enter it in the Lincoln Project Contest worldwide and just so happens it won that contest. And then our local restaurant, Compadres, he has a very small pit. So I went and asked him if he'd be willing to test drive our two-ton smoker and cook on it. So, wow. this is what these kids built. Chef Mark Sierra had never seen anything like it before Vic and the welding kids set it up behind the restaurant. They brought it to me so I can test it out for them, right? You want to find out if it works. Exactly. When I first got the picture of this thing, I was like, no way. I was like, kids didn't do this. High school kids didn't do it. Sure enough, when they brought it, I was like, holy cow. This is something that you see people that have been in the industry building for over 30 years. Would you say you're in love with this smoke? I, I am in love with it. I, okay, I, but how does it cook? Well, let's take a look. So right now we got some pork butts in there. I put them in there this morning. They probably got maybe four more hours to go. 
But these things will just fall apart once I take them inside. And that's what you want. That's what I want, and that's what we serve here. Turns out this two-ton test run almost ended before the first smoke cleared. Out of the blue, I get a phone call from the health department. They started actually telling me, hey, you know you can't use it. I'm like, well, why not? They're like, well, you need an enclosure. Had to have a roof and a screen and everything. He, he thought he was going to lose the ability to test run it for us and lose the opportunity of just being able to support the kids. So the kids went into action, and within 11 hours of the phone call, they built this enclosure. Unbelievable. Yeah. It goes to show what Vic teaches these guys, right? Once a student learns how to weld, it's really like a razor's edge between confidence and arrogance because they leave here knowing that anything they put their mind to, they're able to accomplish. And it all came just from some sparks, some metal, and a dirty shop. You're gonna jam up. You either gotta kick this dude sideways or bring this part closer to you. I've got ex-students that are welding on nuclear expansion joints to graduating from Purdue University, going to work for Polaris. Students that are in their PhD classes at A&M for manufacturing. And it's very exciting and rewarding because that's the end goal is to make a tax paying citizen out of these kids while they are on the tax dollar. Dorman Vic has a message on the wall that he wants no one to forget. Hard to believe what starts out as an iron rose and a lesson in manners can end up with monumental achievements that have absolutely no boundaries. We spent the day with a man who uses a cutting torch and a welding rod to light the way for so many promising young people. How long will you do this? As long as God lets me put one foot in front of the other because I feel like that this is my calling. I love that story. Me too, and we've got plenty more where that came from. Just click on the subscribe button and keep traveling with us.